Hello, well we're back with Nigel, we've got another instalment of the Logan Barry uh, but before that um, Nigel's going to discuss something with you and he's going to show what, how he does it so I'm going to pass you over to Nigel now. Okay, okay. Um, one of the things that is a, a frequent problem when you're making wines is you end up with demijohns from car boot sales or, or whatever looking like this and you can see it's in a real state Here's a clean one to, to compare. And there are lots of ways that people suggest for cleaning demijohns like this. I've used known methods, um, soap and water, scrubbing, piece of chain, uh, pebbles, ball bearings, all sorts of things like that. And then a couple of years ago I was making a wine uh, with a friend from Broughton Astley and she taught me a trick that's really good for getting demijohns like this clean and all we need to do is to use washing powder this can be any brand yeah it doesn't really matter what it no. is does it matter whether it's non-bio or bio i don't think it makes any difference no. i've tried all sorts and they okay. all seem to work equally well so oh is that uh, switched on that's just if i could just inch past you please julie yeah i think i've not put the mains on that's it thank you so we're going to boil the kettle. And whilst that is boiling, I'll just put a little bit of washing powder in. So that looks to be what, about a tablespoon? About a tablespoonful, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to put a small amount of cold water in. And uh, Julie, why am I doing that, do you think? I think it's down to stopping the glass from shattering from That's the right. extreme yeah. heat. Yeah, so we've got to get the, the water in there pretty hot, but we mustn't have it so hot that it's going to, uh, as Julie says, break the glass. So just in case, I've got my feet ready to make a dash. Yeah, well, it, 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 may, it may crack anyway, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll <just> see. <laughs> it's not sloping this way, is it? Yeah. <laughs> right, the other thing I need to do is I've got to skim off a small amount of the floating solids. I've been doing this a couple of times since I saw you last, and I've got the balance of the sugar exactly right now. We're okay. up to two and three quarter pounds of sugar. So if you'd like to look, take a look in there, Julie. I'm just going to skim off very quickly the stuff that's floating. We mustn't dredge, as I told you before, we mustn't dredge the stuff that's at the bottom. So I'm just going to skim that off quickly. It doesn't matter if I miss some of it, because we can get rid of the rest of it when we're racking anyway. So that's got rid of about 90% of that. And this is the Loganberry wine, folks, and uh, well, I've had a, a very tiny sip because I mustn't drink when I'm driving, and uh, it tastes nice. Wouldn't you say so, Nigel? Yeah, it tastes Yeah, tastes successful, good. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Right, so I'll put this in here. Down it, we've made... This will be 18 pints, 18 bottles, won't it? It will be, because we did a two gallon batch. Two gallon, that's 12. Which we didn't film. Yeah. And we've still got enough Logan berries for another 12 bottles. Yeah. Trouble is, it's uh, fitting everything in, isn't it? So well, many. that's right, yeah. And the kitchen's getting a bit crowded. <laughs> Now you can see already that the bottom of that damage on is getting jolly clean. We usually have to leave this for about 10 minutes. Now look at all the dirt that's been loosened there. 
all the liquid is all brown. So that's going to be spotlessly clean in a few minutes. Okay. As you can see, when I you've got to be organised, have everything at hand. Yeah. But even so, you still forget things, don't you, yes, Nigel? You, yes, that's true. That's yeah. true. Okay. Now the next thing I want to show you is how we separate the sediment, which is at the bottom of this container, from the rest of the liquid. So if Julie would like to come round this side, uh, we did this with the low, uh, with the um, rhubarb wine about a, a couple of weeks ago. So I'll bring this over here. Is this a stall what you've made, Nigel? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I wanted something that was nice and firm for Alison to be able to reach into high cupboards from. Nigel's very handy, by the way. He's a real handy man. Okay, so here's the, the Loganbury brew. Now, you'll notice to start with, I'm going to pour this straight into the other container. Uh, Julie, can you remember the reason for doing this? It's because it will bung up with all the sediments if you do it from the very beginning. That's right, yeah. And it will take ages to go through it at all. Yeah, correct. And it's only the last little bit that needs sieving anyway. I know that from experience when I used to be in the printing trade. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right, so that's done that. Put the top on to keep the insects out. Okay. Now this damage on you can see is virtually clean, but you don't really don't want to watch me um, going backwards and forwards rinsing it with water. But basically now what I've got to do is empty it out, rinse it three times with water, and I'm going to end up with a damage on that's as clean as that. I'm going to use this one which I cleaned earlier. So all we need to do now is a big funnel and pour in the old one. one little trick that I um, remember from last time, a teaspoon. Teaspoon in there, yeah. yeah. Clean teaspoon that stops it from blocking up because you frequently get a, a stray fruit, just one is enough to block it up. And then I'll just pour this in. I hope it will all fit in. It's still fizzing fairly vigorously. Well, if, so. it, if it doesn't, you just have to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's fairly palatable. I'm, I'm going to fill it as hard, high as I dare, I think, there to there. Yeah. Well, we've got about half a pint left there. Yeah. I'll probably keep that for topping up, but I'll have to put it in a little bottle. If I keep it in there, it'll go sour. Right. Oh, well, there's my... There's my airlock. Now you've seen, some of you will have seen this before, uh, my airlock, which is silent, because it's got no water in it, just a, a bung with a hole in it, a piece of black tape, gaffer tape, and two pinholes. That okay. lets, the, lets the gas out, but it won't let any insects in. So there we go, put that there. So that's it. Uh, all we need to do now is to wait for that to start to clear. If sediment gets deeper than about one inch, I will rack it by pouring the, li the liquid from the top there into another demijohn and topping up with apple juice or half-made cider, which I've, I've got some, some of that in there. Okay. Okay, Great. that's the end of part three, I think. Okay then, thanks a lot, Nigel. Okay.